Gee, I'll be very disappointed if they haven't heard about Salva. So, <laughs> um, this is not a commercial, so I'm just going to go three slides <laughs> to show who Salva is. So um, it's, a, it's not a marketing presentation. So uh, we are basically, uh, here's Salva. Salva, actually, we are the global uh, leader in t talent, in the next generation talent management system. So we provide a set of solutions and services to our customers who can help them to do what we call people de development. So they actually uh, are this involved from the hire to the retire process. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along the process. We are, um, we are not a very large company, but we have uh, a very large presence in um, all the large enterprises around the world. Actually, uh, Fortune, um, 51 of the Fortune 100 are big customers of Saba. So we have about 2,200 customers around the world, as well as uh, like almost 31 million users that use Saba on a daily basis. Uh, it's deployed in 195 countries, as well as uh, basically supports 37 languages. I think it's more one now. I think 39 languages. And um, we actually spend about um, 200 million plus in R&D, or has it spent so far on an annual basis, actually almost 18% of our revenue goes toward engineering and product development. Um, the, the customer base is huge. You take a look at it. Uh, any vertical that you can think about, and these are Salva's customers. Um, we have customers who actually have from 50 users all the way up to thousands. So like 50 users, small company, all the way up like US Army, use, have 1.5 million soldiers use our product on daily basis, or Cisco, IBM. IBM has more than 400,000 employees that actually um, use the product on a daily basis for training and everything else. So we are heavily uh, penetrated in all the high-tech companies, automotive industry. We, uh, last quarter, we signed up Mahindra uh, from India and then Indian Air Force. So you take a look at it from government entities all the way up to basically smaller uh, software companies. So um, heavily penetrated uh, among almost almost every verticals. Um, this is one slide that shows what we do. So from the moment you decide that you want to hire anybody, we actually provide you with every single little thing that you need in order to go get started. Uh, it's what we call social hiring. It's more of a search rather than staffing. So it's all about what we, we feel that's the next generation of people looking for that kind of a search rather than um, actually staffing. All the way up, onboarding, training them, uh, developing them, um, giving them feedback, all the way up to when they're ready to retire. So every single aspect of the uh, employee, we actually help our uh, customers to manage it and uh, engage the customers. That's the uh, Saba in two minutes. Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Sean. Sure. So you took over as CEO very recently of um, you know, Saba. What are the what are the key things that are changing in your business when you came in, and how does it you know when you come in and take over a company as CEO of the company? What are, what are the things you look to fix or change? What are the trends which is driving that? Sure. Actually, um, you know, Saba has been was in business since um, 1997. So we are not a startup. We are not new into this space. We are heavy duty a learning company. Um, during the last several years, things changed. I think that the number one thing that changed was consumerization of, um, of what's called software um, consumption within the companies. So um, the, the whole talent management world changed when um, new, uh, what we call new generation of workers showed up at work. Number one, we have, now companies have multi-generational workers there, so people who are what we call the Facebook generation, all the way up to the people who used to just heavy duty ERP type solutions. There are also a lot of um, uh, what we call multicultural aspects to the workplace nowadays. And plus there's this new set of technologies, the mobile as well as the gamification, you know, there's the artificial intelligence, everything else that goes into the workplace has caused us to revisit the whole talent management suite. So that's where, uh, that's how the macro and the macro environment, okay. everything changed. On the other side of it was that the traditional workplace was all about HR top down, telling people this is what you need to do in order to move up, this is what you need to do to develop it, versus a new generation coming in, they actually more about peer to peer. So what we call oh. informal everything. So um, that's where we basically, we saw the big change in the industry. And again, the traditional products which were out there, uh, the, what we call the ERPs, were not even addressing what the new generation of the workers as well as what we call the knowledge workers or the blue collar workers, 
were trying to address it. So from that perspective, the whole world was changing, and then the, um, so what we decided to do was to completely change it and come up with a set of solutions, that's what you see today, that actually addresses all of that and help employees to develop themselves rather than a top-down process. Okay, okay. And you, did you go and meet with a whole bunch of customers to decide how, how you want to change it? What are the reaction when you get in and talk to the customers? Do they say, hey, you guys are doing great, or hey, you, know, you have shitty products, you've got to change it. So how does it, what is it? Actually, it's very receptive. So okay. uh, I met with one of our customers, which is the largest telecom um, company in Europe. And they basically tell me that they actually, um, they did a survey of their employees showing new employees coming in uh, a year ago and asked them, you know, how do they feel about um, joining the company. And everybody says they were so enthusiastic. This is a progressive company. They're all number one in Europe and all the other stuff. After one year, all these people were extremely disappointed being joined in the company because, number one, it was just traditional ERP. They could not talk to each other. It had to be through email. There was no social environment for them to get together. They, they could not really do peer-to-peer -peer learning and okay. training. And it was just, so everybody actually immediately opens up. They actually very exciting for them. So, um, so from that perspective, it actually worked out fantastic because Contrary to what you traditionally believe, HR is actually very progressive. They want to make sure that they actually... A lot of people here will like it. <laughs> all right. I thought all developers. Um, so anyway, so that from that perspective, actually, they, 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 they're embracing it very nicely. So. Okay, okay, great. And, when you, and you had a portfolio of products in the learning management, and, and now suddenly you have customers asking for more collaborative software, peer-to-peer. -peer. How did you decide to cut off certain products? It's always things about focus and it's, mm -hmm. you have to say no to a lot of the products and, and so on. How, how did you go about looking at your existing portfolio and say, hey, these are the products I don't want to continue. I want to redeploy the engineering focus right. into the newer products. Right. What are the processes you went through? What are the challenges around that? So I think the number one is starting with the product itself. So the number one um, secret sauce that if you're in the Silicon Valley, you should know that is your number one secret sauce is your developer. So the development team is the most critical part of this whole thing. These are the what we call the people who are not afraid of challenges or are not afraid of basically going the extra step and trying to solve the most complex problems. Mm -hmm. So for us was number one, assembling what we call a more progressive, more um, uh, aggressive engineering team that actually starts the whole approach to the product. Mm -hmm. We started with a platform. We created a platform by which that we could actually add a lot more applications on top of it without really redoing the whole thing. So you started bu building the platform? The platform okay. immediately. Okay. We acquired four companies, and the whole thing was not really to integrate them, but actually what we call just rewrite and put them on top of the platform. So we did that. So we created a, first a brand new product that okay. actually take advantage of all of our knowledge from the previous products, but also with the acquisitions that we've gone through. And then we started with a platform, built the application on top of that, then after that, it was very simple. So you start what we call sunsetting the older applications and okay. then walk with your customers and move them to the new platform. But that's on the on what we call the traditional structure associated with the product. Yeah. But the other part of it was that, what do we put in there, right? So developing the application. So it's all about talking to the customers as well as looking at um, uh, what's changing at the workplace. As I said earlier, we spend a lot of time talking to customers and talking to the next generation of people showing up, because that's the most critical. So when you talk, when you talk about customers, so the, because of consumerization of IT, right now the user has a lot of power. Before, it's, you really talk to the HR leadership and sell it to them or sell it to the CIO. But today, with, with the users getting a lot more power, did you actually go and talk to the users, or it was really only with the HR leadership team and not to the users? No, actually, we have multiple approach to it. So number one, we have a product advisory board. We okay. have a, a client advisory board. And then we have regional activities with a lot. So we actually try to talk to every single level of management, as well as the feedback that we get from the end in users. Because again, we, with the number of users that you see, with 31 million users, you know they get in touch with you, right? Mm -hmm. So when we have a, you know, from the, our support organization, our product management team, we actually are in constant contact with a lot of you know, cu customers and different levels within the customer base. That's why, again, for us to take a look at, you know, okay, everything is moving to a social-based environment, but social is not really the end result. Social is just a container. So then how you deliver an application that can be consumed much easily within a container, that was the whole secret sauce. Okay, sure. okay. And, oh, and as you go through this process, there is this two models of innovation. One is 
top down, uh, again comes from an Apple kind of culture, goes down to the CEO, says, you know, those shall build this product, and then the entire company goes and builds this. Second was, at least during the Eric Smith era time in Google, it is really about, you know, get thousand flowers bloom, have all this innovation coming from bottoms up, and then it gets um, you know, finalized into the product and so on. What is what is your belief as a CEO of the company? Which one do you prefer? And how do you go about the, what the process around, around that? Uh, actually, I prefer all of the above because okay. it, it, you know, the top down, it just becomes, because you, you become completely disjointed with what the um, customers are asking for. So we actually have a very much, we, strategically, it's a top down. But then okay. when it comes down to actual nitty gritty side of the house, it's bottoms up. We also did, we use our own product and we created what we call the uh, customer community. So our customers use our community. We open it up to our customers to not only talk with us, but also talk with each other. We get tremendous amount of feedback from our customers. And again, you allow your customers to talk to each other. That's not a good thing sometimes. That's a great thing. <laughs> I know. But no, it's great actually because number one, they, they discuss a lot of things among themselves. But number okay. two, when somebody proposes any kind of a enhancement or uh -huh. new features, actually the whole community talks about it, which is fantastic for us because we sit down and listen to the conversation. But then we also have our product managers. As I said, we have product advisory boards. So we have a regular quarterly call with all of our, basically, whoever shows up with one of our customers, and we have a discussion. This is what we are working on, what you give us the feedback. So it's, it's, it's again, we call it the community, but it's heavy duty, basically, two-way conversations. Again, under no condition, we create a product, and we are not a product-centric company. We are a market-centric company. So okay. you know, this is, when the founder leaves the company, then it becomes heavy duty marketing company, right? Rather than becoming just a, I have a product, you better come and get it, right? That's not how it works. Got it, so it's really about what the customers are looking for exactly. and, and, and drive them. Right. Okay. But again, we have what we call aggressive people in our organization who are continuously going after trying to figure out what's the next thing, big thing that's gonna come down the pike. So we're also scouting out there trying to figure out again. So that's why the development organization is so critical. So it's not only what you build inside the product, but also what they hear. So for example, we, you know, we had our uh, engineering product. This was basically bottoms up. They came in and said, hey, we can put artificial intelligence inside our product so that actually, you know, the IBM talks about Watson. You know, it's good for Jeopardy, but not really for day-to-day -day work. So what we did, they, they actually came up and created an artificial intelligence engine inside the product. So it just makes a recommendation to the users. So if you're within the company, come and make a recommendation to you that because of the, your position and which organization you're in, you better take these classes, this training in the company. You should follow these people within the company. And this is what we think you should do for your next step. So, oh, interesting. So, okay. so that's bottoms up. Uh, okay. The other part of it, for example, was another engineering team came back and said, hey, you know, we got to put a lot of marketing inside our product. So how you take the analytics to the next level. So again, so that's, again, for us is not only just listening to the customers, but also take a look at what's the latest, greatest technology that I can actually add to the product itself. Okay. So you talked a little about um, using customer information for managing your product portfolio, what kind of uh, features which go into the product. What about competition? And especially um, in, in the area where you are in, right? it's pretty hard sort of acquisition. You have competition one level coming from company like LinkedIn. You have competition from company like SAP buying such factors. A whole bunch of very interesting startups coming out. Right? How, do you, how do you plan that? And right. What is the competition role in the whole thing? So we don't compete with LinkedIn. LinkedIn actually is a great uh, feeder to our system because okay. we, uh, we use LinkedIn to do search for talent. So uh, our customers can do drag and drop their you know, LinkedIn or any other um, job posting site there, drag and drop it so your jobs get posted there. Mm. Actually goes and searches and then comes back and tell you <laughs> these are the people you need to go recruit. Okay. So, but uh, we do compete with Oracle, we do compete with SAP and um, I'm not, you know, we are, we are always, you know, mindful of them, but I tell you, none of them wake up in the morning and said, what I'm going to do for talent management. The, the first thing they figure out in the morning is that how much money I'm going to get out of you, right? So they, for me, is that it's, it's, we know there's zero innovation that they put into this space. Um, they bought our competitors and kind of, they kind of went away, actually. So it was great for us, but... But we're concerned about the. Oh, they paid a lot of money for Success Factors. Beautiful, yeah, that's great. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good exit for Success Factors. <laughs> no, great. No, but 
There's nothing. They have done nothing since they acquired the company in order to come up with any kind of innovations. Okay. Versus we have gone like a million miles an hour. We're more concerned about the niche players who they show okay. up, basically. They come up with very innovative, very focused, small area they want to do it. Um, but at the end of the day, I think people are How not do you going... you keep track of these companies, right? There are thousands of these companies come in and, and just uh, in the Bay Area, it could be in the East Coast, could be in China, Israel. HR is something which people understand, um, at least they think they understand, and they try to build these products. So how, do you, how do you understand these companies? How do you track them, scan them? Well, you know, we have 753 employees in the company, and they're very active, so, uh, which is very good. So okay. we get a lot of empo employee feedback on that. Of course, when you're in the Silicon Valley, you get the, basically the, the whole heartbeat, right? So actually, our approach is basically we are involved in a lot of activities, you know, whether it's the, you know, the early stage investments by angel investors or Thai, or basically you take a look at other ones that are other. Okay. So we, we are basically very really mindful about what's going on. Okay. Um, yeah, we miss some, I mean, you know, but again, for us is, it's, they provide one, uh, what, we, what I call, very point-focused solution, but again, our customers are not buying uh, one-point solution. They're looking for, how do they take care of one thing as a platform, uh -huh. right? And so, the small companies are, their feeders, so they actually get acquired by the larger ones, they provide specific functionality. Um, and that's what we do. We acquire three companies just because of that, because they developed something which they, they thought the leadership okay. was great, so we brought them in and uh, we integrate them into our product. Okay, okay. So that's good. Uh, and, and another question I had is when you, when you think about products and look at newer capabilities, you talked about analytics. You know, I mean, mobile is something everybody talked about. How do you go about building this capability within your organization? Do you, uh, do you say that, hey, this region in the world has better capability, I'm going to use that region for this, or what, is, how, what, what is the process of building capability in the organization to build these products? And is, at some level, is there, your product even help in that area? Right, so you know, we, we have engineering centers here in Redwood Shores, we have it in uh, Boston, we have it in Pune, we have it in Bangalore, and uh, we also use engineering resources in other countries like Ukraine and mm -hmm. other places. So okay. what we do is that we actually created what we call centers of excellence. So uh, a lot of what we call thought leadership goes from here because that's where we have all of our you know, senior management team from the engineering perspective. And then we created different teams within these locations that actually focus on the specific area that we want them to. Okay. Uh, we are not into basically creating redundant organizations. We have basically specific teams working on specific items. And then whenever we basically think that, okay, this is really a short-term activity, then we use third parties to come and help us. Okay, okay. So, um, okay. But again, it's, okay. uh, it's, those are irrelevant when it comes down to what's the end result. The end result for us is, you know, the, how quickly can I get to the yeah. market with the best product possible. Okay, okay. Any questions from the audience? Any comments to add to what uh, Sean talked about, the, you know, managing product portfolios? Any, any other questions? And uh, so I'll continue with uh, one, one other quick question I had. And you have a... A, a global footprint, and, and Sabah has a large presence in India. Um, how does, I mean, go through this change, right? You're going through this change from a traditional on-premise products to a cloud platform, more social, a lot more analytics, and a competition from a lot of the startups. Uh, was that a challenge, that having a team far away from here um, to react so fast? Or how did you make that happen? And you've made this transition beautifully in the last two years. How did you make that happen? with a large team outside, not sitting 10,000 miles away? So um, I think there's several things. Number one, what tools do you use? Yeah. So we actually have a great product that <laughs> does handle okay. that, so which is fantastic. We use our own product. But the other one is, I think, is your engineering management team. I think that makes a big difference. The people okay. who are continuously engaged, right? Uh -huh. You understand the distance, and you understand basically what, uh, number one, culture, you need to understand it. Number two, you need to understand that it's not on your time, it's on everybody's time. So you cannot just basically say, I'm a nine to five type person. So hmm. engineering managers are the, what I said started is a critical part is your whole engineering, engineering management team that actually understands the dynamics and then how to create, again, around the clock development activities. So for us was we're having it in multiple locations is how do we make sure that we continuously develop tests okay. and then so it's basically, it's, it's all about basically the best engineering managers that you can find. 
Okay, it's so all about that. But having the right right team right in that team. location help you in the transition. Exactly. Okay. Other okay. than that, I think it's just that this is normal. This is now normal. So it's not that okay. I have one. So you you didn't say that like other Silicon Valley companies say let 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 my all my team come all the managers come here and sit next to me and. No, no, we, we, that's not how it works. Exactly. No. It, okay. it, it, the world has changed. It's again, it's continuous development cycle. That okay. that's so critical because again, time to market and time to react to the customer needs. I think that's you have to have a completely distributed environment. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to compete in a global basis. So. Okay, so it continues to work for you. That is great to hear. Yeah. Thanks, great. Sean. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Sean. I think you gave a, a good insights in terms of how did you end up over talking to customers, different levels of customers, mm -hmm. and understanding what their needs are, um, transition from some of the older product lines to a newer product lines, Moody Engineering team there, use the global delivery mm -hmm. capability you have to your advantage. Don't worry about Oracles and SAP, but worry about the startups. Did some acquisitions to ensure the right capability and the product um, come in. Exactly. Great, all the best for, for, for the success. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you're running the cloud yourself for all of these 95 or so countries? Um, yes, so we started with managed services. And uh, we literally, literally, we, we want to get to the point that we wanted to guarantee like four nines reliability. Uh, because again, uh, the, uh, the, the whole uh, premise here when you're cloud is just like dial tone. You have to have the capability to provide service all the time. So with that, we need to have the control over it ourselves because the level of urgency for your, some of your suppliers is not as good as you can be. So no, we, we operate our own cloud around the world. So, so considering that, that you have the data for the all these corporations which are in 95 countries, are you seeing any backlash because of the NSA information, how the government was able to tap into it? You getting any of those customers being concerned, not wanting to store the data with you? Okay, so we, our data centers are not in 95 countries. We have data centers in US, in Europe, in two locations, as well as in Australia and very soon, I also one in India. So the way we do it is that um, we, we, from day one, we understood, no matter, forget about the government issue, right? The, the whole thing is what we call the hackers and privacy. We do every single little thing that's required for us to provide for what's called a full uh, encryption. From the moment that you leave your desktop all the way up, if the customer even wants, we do the database encryption. So uh, we provide that in details. And then we actually put it in the, each region because of the government regulations, either EU requirements and everything else. We actually so so curious about it because we actually have our own chief security officer and we have our own completely separate security organization that reports to me directly. We are all over that because to us is that's the worst thing that can happen to any company, especially a cloud company, when it gets penetrated by uh, you know, somebody unauthorized access. So no, we got it. We understand it. And you take a look at it, you know, the, t the type of customers that we got, the, the, the amount of um, security that they do on us, right? The amount of um, um, kind of audit that goes on, whether it's basically largest banks or Credit Suisse. Uh, you take a look at Lloyds Bank of London. All these companies or Shell Oil or the, the ones who are very much concerned about this privacy, they're actually, they do their own audit of us on a regular basis. So... No, we, we get it. We understand it. There has been a little bit of backlash in Europe, and that's why the re demand for complete end-to-end -end encryption came in, and we so we introduced. We are the only one in our space that provide database encryption. So, Great, so, thank so you. Do you yeah. use the commercial encryption, or you have your own? No, we use commercial encryption for that. Thank you. Um, thanks, Sean. Sure. Right. Great, great having you here. Great, thanks. Thank you. All right, thank you. I will have a small... Okay. It's a book. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. All right.